On to the next modification project for my 2015 Honda Fit, I've decided to install air shock absorbers and replace the stock uh, shock absorber on the rear suspension only, specifically because since I will be hauling a trailer, uh, it is going to weigh down the back end a little bit and I want a way to compensate the right height uh, when I'm hauling a load. Now I've already read some other uh, threads on the forum that the shock absorber can be replaced with one of the Monroe Air Strut. Uh, I, I forget the exact number and I'll look for it in the description. This is the initial research phase, but I've already measured the extended height of the shock absorber, which if I was to include the bump stop, I'd be looking around between 24 and 25 inches. You subtract that out, you're probably looking at um, 22, 23. And I think that actually coincides with the uh, the previous generation models, the GE and the GD. Uh, the 2015 Honda Fit EX uh, and all the trims is the GK uh, style body. And for those that are interested, uh, sometimes uh, it becomes necessary to adjust the rear toe and the rear camber of the uh, rear axle, but as you can tell, this is a solid beam, and then the hubs are mounted. I thought they were welded, and I apologize for uh, my previous uh, post saying that they weren't, uh, they were welded on. It turns out that the rear hubs are uh, bolted on one, two, and then three and four. So you can actually take this hub completely off and put a shim on the back here to adjust for rear toe and then rear camber. So thankfully that can be done if you have rear alignment issues. Just the same as if you can adjust them for the GE and the GD uh, style bodies of the previous generations. So I purchased the Monroe Max Air uh, part number MA793 for the 2015 Honda Fit. Uh, there was talk of using the MA811s which I did buy, but it turns out that the um, MA793s are a much better fit, and I'll talk about that in the next segment of my video. But I wanted to do a uh, mock setup here outside the vehicle here. So I got the MA793s. I got myself one of these uh, uh, $10 uh, bicycle foot pumps here. And uh, right now there's maybe about 10 pounds of pressure in there, and I'm doing that to illustrate a point. So what you basically get is you get this T-fitting, you get one eighth tube, which I don't know why they do one eighth tubing. Most uh, air spring or any type of uh, air shock uh, suspension kits usually will come in a quarter. And a uh, quarter is a lot easier to adapt to rather than one eighth. So uh, I don't know why they did that. That is going to be a problem. I'll talk about that later on. But uh, over here you have the Schrader valve that you go and you fill up the, uh, the air bags to. And when you fill it up, it equally fills up the airbags, uh, so you have equal amount of pressure in here. But there is a bit of a caveat to this. So what happens is, so I got a little about 10 pounds of pressure in there, so I can at least push down on one of them. This is the problem that I can see happening here. Uh, it's kind of like a seesaw effect. Say if you're taking a turn uh, one way, and what will happen say, is, say, if I'm taking a... Um, so I'm taking a right turn here. This spring is going to compress due to the body roll. And now watch if I push down on this. See what's going to happen is that the air pressure is going to go through the T and push it out to the other spring, which is going to exasperate the body roll in your vehicle. That is not a good scenario there because uh, it, it's going to make body roll much worse. It's going to potentially create a hazard there. So the next thing I'm going to do, before I even install this on the vehicle, and I just went to Napa, they have to order the parts for me, I'm going to put myself a little uh, Petcock shutoff valve here. So what will happen is that after I air it up equally, then what I'll do is I'll turn this one, I'll turn off that uh, Petcock valve off, so that when, if I go into a hard turn and this one compresses, for example, the air is going to stay in here, and it's not going to flow to the other uh, airbag here. And it'll make it, a little bit more stable on the road and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now I think eventually I'm gonna go into buying one of those uh, wireless air kits uh, from Airlift. It's a company that's been around for well over 60 years and they actually have a manifold where you connect each spring to separately so it can control 
each spring with its own set of pressure and they don't bleed into each other with the T-fitting. Uh, that'll probably be down the road. That is a pretty expensive setup, but it's actually quite simple to install. And hey, you know, that'll be the next upgrade of, uh, when I get around to it. So I'm doing the leak down test on these uh, air shocks right now. And with the foot pump, don't buy this foot pump. Uh, I got it from Walmart. It's only like 10 bucks. As soon as I was pushing down out of this thing bent and it's pretty much cracked here. So I'm going to go and get myself another one. Something hopefully a little bit better. Right now I got the uh, PSI about, let's see if I can focus in on this, yeah, about just under 70 pounds of pressure, which I don't even think I would ever need to go that high because the one, the Honda Fit, uh, is only got a, a class one hitch. It's rated up to 200 pounds of tongue weight, plus any cargo that's going to be, or and the passengers that is going to be inside the vehicle, I don't think I would really need to... Um, put that much pressure in here but um i'm hold hoping that this uh as flimsy as this system looks you know with the compression fittings and everything it uh actually is holding the pressure i'm quite uh, impressed actually uh so just note to self don't buy these piece of shit pumps get something a little bit better now I did buy this from Walmart as well and I do keep it in the uh trunk of my car it's one of those um uh, smart inflating to, uh, pumps here. You set it to the pressure that you want. It's got a light, you know, it's only like 25 bucks. You push the power on and then once the pressure reaches the preset uh, PSI, it shuts off and you're done. Uh, I could see this being very handy. I've already had to uh, use it just because, you know, it, uh, during the winter, the your tires tend to lose pressure as the temperature drops. I believe the ratio is about for every 10 degrees that it drops, in temperature that you lose about one psi in your tires so i wanted to discuss in this segment uh, real quick on the differences between the ma811 and the ma793 which i will be installing on the vehicle uh, so i've heard read on the forums that there's been plenty of success with the ma811s working for the first and second generation honda fits uh, some of the uh, attributes that they have is that they have a very close to the same to the stock uh, upper stem and these two upper stems are the same for the 793 and the 811 uh, the probably the more noticeable difference is that the air fittings up here rather than down here for the 793 but where the differences uh, ch are located on the bottom here on the bottom bolt and you also notice that the full extended travel of the 811 is shorter than the 793 now I haven't taken off the stock uh, shock just yet and I will put it on the on the side here for an equal comparison between the three but already I can tell that the MA811 I measured on the stock uh, shock there it's about 23 23 and a qu three quarter inches or so this one's somewhere around 22 this one is actually around 23 and a half I believe uh, so the 793 makes much more sense to be used on the stock uh, of the GK uh, 2015. The only problem is that here is the stock lower bolt that you get from Honda. It's a it's a fine coarse thread. I'm sorry, fine thread. It's um, pitched uh, very fine. So if you cannot get this anywhere else but from Honda, it is a uh, 73 millimeters long and it's a uh, 10 millimeter um, size. So the MA811 actually already has a 10 millimeter bushing located on its stock which is good you can easily bolt it in the problem with it is is that the overall um, width of it is too small to work on any of the generations all the generation uh, Honda fits would require you to take the two upper uh, what normally would go up on the stem here you would have to take these two in order to take up the slack and you need to put them like so in order to get it to the exact width to fit in the lower eye mount so as a result, you really uh, are forced to do that. Now, moving on to the 793, the overall width is actually the stock width for the stock shock and the all the generations of the Honda Fit. The problem that you have with this one is, is that this is a 10 millimeter. The lower eye is actually for a 12 millimeter uh, bushing. So what you have to do to overcome that, I got this one off Amazon, 
is to get what's called a spanner bushing. Now, a spanner bushing basically adapts, uh, so the outer diameter is 12 millimeters and the inner diameter is 10. So this basically slides in here and it's 42 millimeters long. And let's see how well I can get this. If you could see that, that's just the right size that you need. And then that way, when you put the bolt in, it won't, uh, it won't uh, move around like uh, like it's like the bolt is too small. Now I originally purchased the MA 811s last year, figuring that at some point I would be putting uh, them onto the car. But uh, I've had a lot more time to research my original decision, and that's why I got the 793s. Now that doesn't mean that the 811s are not a viable option. Uh, just it's not going to work for the GK at all. Um, not for the purposes that I really want to have it for. Plus, when you there, I'm not going to really get too much into it. But then you have issues if the if your stock shock is longer, and if you put a shorter, the rebound and the bounce, uh, all these other metrics that uh, it's going to make your car handle differently. Some people may not like it, and it's better off just to try and get it as close to a stock uh, size as you can. So the next segment here is going to be uh, with the stock strut removed. I'm not going to really film that. It's a little cumbersome, but I'll bring the stock strut in. I'll put it side by side with all three, and then we can sit down here and really figure out what the main differences are between the three.